Let's keep in mind that lots of rice farmers are extremely poor and that they actually often still have to buy rice uh, because they just can't produce themselves enough for their families. So already by bringing in new technologies, new ways of growing rice, better varieties, we can hope that they don't have to do that anymore. Now, um, the next step would be then to see if, and what happens in Madagascar, if then actually enough rice can then be produced to, to sell that and, and earn a living. Then we may hope that at a certain moment, rice prices may come down again, so that urban consumers also have, have an interest, because they will <coughs> buy rice for a cheaper price. If that happens through uh, increasing productivity of the rice farmer, rice farmer will also benefit. No, I think uh, there are, we're getting a number of, of signals from donors that they're very encouraged by this, and have made some uh, sent us some very strong signals that they are willing to support a strong Erie Water collaboration. So the country where we are supposed to work are fully engaged about this initiative because they are aware that uh, we are not going to work alone, but we are going to work with the NAS in order to strengthen their capacity, in order also to do research with them and to have high impact in Africa. So we have full support of the countries. We've already conducted quite a few training courses in the last year and a half, I would say, uh, including one on rice production and post-harvest earlier this year. Seed production. Seed production. Uh, so it is a, a, a very big role. Uh, and in the projects that we are developing, uh, that will continue. Uh, Primarily, I think, through three types of uh, uh, capacity building. One, whenever we have a chance, sandwich scholarships for MS and PhD scholars. Uh, 